My name is Terry Malisi, and I bet I know what you're thinking. What is she doing in the studio of HCAM instead of in her home, in her kitchen, surrounded by the ambiance of the gathering? Well, let me explain. When we taped the dinner party, the paella party, we used two tapes, and those two tapes were misplaced. And when they were found, inadvertently, we taped over the first seven minutes of one of them. So here I am recreating the beginning of that show and also the dessert. So bear with us and we'll be right to the show as soon as possible. Now, tonight's dinner party is really special for me because not only am I cooking it for one of my favorite groups of people, my AM train gang, and I'll get to that in a minute, but I'm also cooking one of my all-time favorite dishes to prepare for a dinner party, and that's paella. So a little bit about my guests. I work in Boston, and like a lot of folks, I ride the commuter rail into Boston, and I ride the same train every day, sit with the same people, so it's not unusual to make friends and um, talk about a lot of issues and interests. And I met the first train member on the platform waiting for the train. And another train member was already in this group. I met a third train member while giving advice to a new rider on how to fold the dollar bills to slip into the tiny slots at the train station. And I met the fourth train buddy when I moved from the last car to the first car to shave five minutes off my ride time so I can get my morning coffee and still be in my manager's office for my daily 7.30 meeting. So that's my AM train gang. And I also have a PM train gang, which is mostly men, and they want their own show, but that's another show all by itself. So now it's on to the gathering paella party menu. We're going to be starting off with the sangria and the appetizers are salted almonds, spicy cracked marinated olives, sauteed garlic mushrooms, pickled stuffed sweet peppers, beef skewers with orange and garlic, chorizo and red wine, cheese and sun-dried tomato toasts. For a salad, we'll be having Spanish asparagus and orange salad. Main course, of course, paella. And then for dessert, we're going to have Cabrali stuffed poached pears. Now, because the dessert also got taped over, I'm just going to read the ingredients and quickly what the process is. The ingredients are six Bosque pears, eight cups of Tardio, which is a sweet late harvest wine made from the Torrente's grapes, preferably Santa Julia, eight cups of Malbec, one of the traditional Bordeaux varietals. Malbec has characteristics that fall somewhere between a Cabernet Sauvignon and a Merlot. One cup of sugar, two cinnamon sticks, five star anise, two cloves, and six tablespoons of Cabrales, blue cheese, and trust me, I believe I used a lot more than that, and one cup of walnuts. So you're gonna peel the pears and remove the core from the bottom using a melon baller. Keep the stem end intact. Scrub the pears with a new abrasive plastic scrubbing um, pad to remove any rough edges or textures left from the knife. Set the pears aside. In a large stock pot, combine the tardio, red wine, sugar, cinnamon sticks, star anise, and cloves and bring to a boil. And believe me, the smell is going to just be marvelous. Add the pears and cook until tender about 25 minutes. Remove the pears and reduce the remaining liquid by half, about 45 minutes. Meanwhile, in a food processor, puree the blue cheese and toasted walnuts and set aside. Place the mixture in a pastry bag and stuff the pears with walnut and cabrali mixture. Serve with the reduced poaching liquid, which is just fabulous. And what I ended up doing, instead of piping it into the pear, I left the pears whole and I took a round ball of the stuffing, 
put it on the plate and put the sauce around it and it was just fabulous. So I really hope you enjoy this show of the gathering, the paella party. Now it's on to the sangria. What I have here, main ingredient, two bottles of rosé wine, bottle of club soda, three peaches which I will dice, a pint of strawberries sliced, two lemons sliced, cup of sugar, and one orange that needs to be sliced. So what I'm going to do is actually get the ends off and slice them up like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the rosé into this wonderful mixing bowl. <laughs> it's actually a punch bowl, but I'm not going to serve it in this. What I'm going to serve it in is this beautiful pitcher that I got from my mother with these beautiful glasses. Sorry, they're not from Spain, they're from Italy. <laughs> okay, now let's add some fizz to it. Add the club soda. Mmm. Okay, let's stir this. Not like I really had to. I'll throw, then you just throw everything in. That looks pretty. Get the sugar in there. I think I will start with the sugar. Try, oh, look at that action. Looks like a volcano. <laughs> we just had one, didn't we? Yikes. Okay, now for the strawberries and the lemon. Mmm. You know, I just might serve it in this. Who knows? How's that looking? That looks good. Yeah? Nice and colorful. Like tonight's party. That is beautiful. Mmm. Boy, I can't wait to drink this. So I'm not going to wait. I'm going to take a taste. See how it is. Mmm. Quite nice. Okay, well the sangria is done. That'll go in the fridge to blend. Now it's off to tapas. Be right back. The first item on my tapas bar is salted almonds. So here I have a 12 ounce bag of almonds. I have one teaspoon of paprika and four tablespoons of oil and also sea salt. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to put the oil in the pan and with my fingers just spread it all around. Then I'm going to take my almonds, put them right in the pan and I'm going to coat them. So you really want to make sure you move them all around and you can see when they're coated they become very shiny and beautiful. Now what you want to do is get them in a single layer pretty much. Okay so these are ready to go into the oven set at 350 for 20 minutes until they're golden brown. And when they come out we're going to drain them on paper towels, sprinkle them with the paprika and with the sea salt. So I'm going to put these in the oven and get back to the next item on our tapas menu. Be right back. And now it's on to the stuffed pickled sweet peppers. So here I have two jars of roasted peppers and you can use any size jar depending on how many people you're serving. I have 
one package of goat cheese and this came oh about that big about that round and what I did was I sliced it and kind of made little pieces like this and we have some dill we take a piece of goat cheese and we just wrap the roasted pepper around it. Isn't that the cutest little thing? Now again, they don't have to be perfect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place them in this dish. You can see it better like that. And then when I get them all done, I'll sprinkle the dill on it and it'll just be perfect. How simple is this? Okay, so here they are. And then what I'm going to do I'm going to take my dill and just sprinkle it all around and I'm crushing the dill as I sprinkle. And now it's time to take the pears out from poaching and look at that. Is that beautiful? <laughs> all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the pears and then I'm going to put them in the fridge, let them cool down and I'm going to continue to simmer the sweet stock and let it reduce because once we put our dish together with the stuffing, we'll drizzle the sauce over it. Now, I don't know if you heard the timer go off, but our almonds are ready. And look at those. Are they beautiful? So what we're going to do is drain them on the paper towels. I don't know if you can hear it sizzle. And while they're still hot, I'm going to sprinkle them with the sea salt. Liberally. And then paprika. And there you have it. I'll let these cool off. And when they do, I'll put them in a serving dish. OK, now it's off to spicy cracked marinated olives. And what I have is one large jar of olives. I have four garlic cloves. I have a teaspoon of thyme, two teaspoons of cracked caraway seeds. I have two table, I'm sorry, two teaspoons of fennel and one lemon chopped and two teaspoons of olive oil. And what you're going to do, give this a good mix. And it's the cracked caraway seeds that you can really smell in this. This is quite nice. So what I'll do is I'll put this in a nice serving dish. That's all. Wonderful, isn't it? Now it's on to the chorizo in red wine. Now what I did was I took sausages and marinated them overnight in some Bordeaux, red Bordeaux. And as you can see, they turned a very nice purplish color. I've got the oil going in the pan, heating it up. And what we're going to do, we're just going to serve. And what we're going to do we're going to make bite-sized slices and I will throw them in the frying pan 
Now we're going to put the chorizo in the fry pan. You can hear it. Sounds wonderful. Give it a good stir. Let it heat up a bit. I'm going to turn up the heat. And because they were marinated, they look partially cooked. So you want to make sure that you really cook them. Okay, so I think I'm going to take my brandy. Pour it in. And see how this works. Step back. Woo! All right. As you can tell, I don't do this a lot. And maybe it's a good thing. <laughs> okay. Now we're just going to continue to cook that. The brandy will render down. Make a nice little sauce. And so I'm going to let this continue to cook. Oh, maybe five, ten minutes on slightly high heat because I want the edges to get nice and crispy. Okay, so this has been cooking for a while. So I'm going to take my parsley and sprinkle it over and then give it a good stir. Go. Don't those look great? Okay, so now it's on to cheese and sun-dried tomato toasts. Bread, sliced, toasted. What we're going to do, take a little bit of sun-dried tomato, which I chopped, put a little mozzarella on it, okay, maybe not so little, and then sprinkle it with mozzarella, and there you have it. So I'm going to prepare these, get them all ready, and I'll pop them in the oven right before my guests appear. Our menu is shaping up quite nicely. And we only have two more appetizers to complete our tapas bar, and then it will be on to paella. Okay, so what we have here is cubed top round beef that's been marinating overnight in three tablespoons of white wine and one cup of orange juice and garlic. And here we have cherry tomatoes, orange peppers, and little pearl onions. Now these wooden skewers have been soaking since this morning. So this is when I put them under the broiler, they won't burn. So each skewer is going to have a piece of beef, a cherry tomato, an orange pepper, and a pearl onion. Aren't they cute? Here we have ingredients for our sautéed garlic mushrooms. I have two pounds of mushrooms quartered. I have four cloves of garlic chopped. I've got two tablespoons of parsley and one lemon so I can sprinkle the lemon juice over it. So the olive oil is hot. I'm going to add my mushrooms. And just let that start to cook. Add the garlic. And everything will blend together once this starts going. I'm going to put my parsley in here. And I'll wait a few minutes before I add the lemon juice. I think I'm going to sprinkle my lemon on there. Give that a nice stir. And really, there's not much in this dish to mask the flavor of the mushrooms. And, you <laughs> And they'll be perfect to just pop in your mouth. Sauteed garlic mushrooms. Now it's off to the paella. Okay, 
Now for the star of the menu, paella. Little history about paella. It was invented about maybe 200 years ago in Valencia, Spain. And what they used to do was they would get shellfish from the coast and throw in whatever they could to this dish. The main ingredient is rice, a rose, and they would spice it with saffron. Now this is the world's most expensive spice and it turns rice yellow, gives it a wonderful flavor. And as you can see, this is how I bought it in this lovely bottle and it comes in its own little pouch and it lasts literally forever. Okay, don't quote me on that, but you get my idea. It lasts a very long time. So that's the saffron. So the thing I like about paella is you can put anything in it. If your guests don't like shrimp, don't put shrimp in. They don't like chicken, you don't have to use chicken. The beauty about this dish is it's never made the same twice. And I know when I make it, I'm always doing something different, like adding lobster to it. But let me go over the ingredients with you. We have two packages of sweet Italian sausage, of course the saffron, we have the frozen peas, we have four cloves of garlic chopped, we have two pounds of shrimp, two pounds of bay scallops, 24 little necks, two cooked lobsters, one three pound chicken cut up, four tomatoes chopped, two large onions chopped, and then I have two green peppers and two red peppers chopped, and the star right here, the rice. We're gonna take this to the stove, and what I'm gonna do is saute the chicken and the sausage, and then the vegetables, and then what we do is we'll throw the rice in the pan with boiling water, mix it all up, and then put it in a large paella pan, which I use a large roasting pan, and then the last 30 minutes of baking, the shellfish goes on with the peas. So, meet you back at the stove. I'm going to add my garlic. Get that going. I have a little oil in the pan. I'm going to take my sausage and brown this. Okay, so you want to take the sausage out, and for some reason, the sausage didn't stick together. It looks like the casings really came off. So I'm just going to pretty much use the uh, larger pieces and then save the rest for a sauce. Now don't forget, you don't have to cook these all the way through. You're just browning. Now I'm going to brown the chicken. And then we're going to leave the chicken drippings in the pan and start to saute our vegetables. I'm going to start boiling my water in the microwave. Now I'll, sa I'll saute these until the vegetables are soft, but not really browned. The vegetables are somewhat sauteed, and as I'm sauteing them, I'm scraping up the bits from the bottom of the pan from when I sauteed the meat. I'm going to add the rice along with the saffron, mix it all up together. And once I do that, I'm going to put it in the roasting pan, and then I'll put the meat on top of that, pop it into an oven set at 350. The recipe says for 30 minutes. I like to go a little longer just to make sure everything's cooked through. So I'll probably cook it close to an hour. And then once that's done, I'm going to put the shellfish on top, pop it back in the oven for another 15 minutes and then we'll be good to go. 
Now what we're going to do is add the rice, saffron, beautiful, and you'll see when this dish comes out of the oven how nicely colored the rice is. What I'm going to do is turn this over to the roasting pan. Just spread it around nice and even. Okay, now we're going to take our boiling water and pour that in. And so I'm going to take my chicken pieces and plop them in. So be careful when you do this at home. I'm going to sprinkle the sausage. Okay, so we're about ready to add the finishing touches to the paella. So I thought what I'd do for a kick is leave the lobsters whole because it is such a pretty presentation. So how's that? And then I want to sprinkle bay scallops all around. Now the shrimp. Now the clams. I'm just going to plop around so that when they open, it's a pretty presentation. All right, and now for the frozen peas. My guest should be here shortly, so I'm going to finish setting the table, lay out my tapas, and get the sangria going. Be right back. Well, there you have it, another episode of The Gathering. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers. Salute. Cheers. Here's to HCAM. Woo! Woo!